I was one of the disbelievers, actually. I, I knew maybe enough already uh, at this time about scalability. And for me, this was, it, it just didn't scale very well. And so in, uh, it must have been in 2016, in summer, uh, I was researching somehow on the internet and I discovered uh, Lehman's paper about the hash graph and it just blew me away. It was just like, yes, this could work. This is actually how it should be. Welcome to Hedera Hashgraphs, gossip about gossip. If you are a developer, an entrepreneur, crypto enthusiast, or just trying to learn more about how distributed ledger technology and Hedera Hashgraph will impact your industry, then you'll love the episodes that we have coming up. Bookmark us, add us to your podcast app, and stay tuned. Hey there, and welcome to Hedera Hashgraph, Gossip About Gossip. I'm your host, Paul Madsen. I'm joined today by Roland Ringenberg, a Swiss ambassador. Welcome, Roland. Hi, Paul. Thank you very, very much for having me. So, Roland, I was preparing for this episode and reading your bio and what you're up to, and I honestly believe that you might be involved in more Hedera-based projects than I am. I'm jealous. (laughs) No, no, don't be. It's just awesome to be uh, part of the journey since so long now. It's great to see somebody so passionate and committed to Hedera. So let's let's get to those projects in a bit. But before we do, how did you get here? What's your background? How did you get into DLTs? I'm an independent digital architect. I made myself independent uh, one and a half years ago. I'm one of the lucky guys who is allowed to shape this new world, this digital world. So I really focus at the moment on bringing new or experimenting new business models in all these infrastructure. And how did I come to that? I, I uh, discovered the internet early, early on. I wasn't really an engineer, so I started also with my C64 and so on, so on from this generation. But I was more in, in business and in sales, actually. And I, I discovered the web in the 90s, started to, to get involved. And after the dot-com crisis, I really got the chance to start building to using this this infrastructure. Yeah, after many years now on this web 2.0 bandwagon, I guess I discovered blockchain somehow in 2013, 14, I don't know anymore. So not at the very, very beginning, but early on anyway. I was one of the disbelievers, actually. I I knew maybe enough already uh, at this time about scalability. And for me, this was, it it just didn't scale very well. And so uh, it must have been in 2016, in summer, uh, I was researching somehow on the internet and I discovered uh, Lehman's paper about the hash graph. And it just blew me away. It was just like, yes, this could work. This is actually how it should be. And of course, I read immediately that it was patented, that the patent was on it. And, and so I first thought about, yeah, it maybe goes more into a B2B direction and maybe it's, it will that much enterprise style that it's not really for me as an independent. So when I learned that Hidera actually hired a developer advocate, Ken Anderson, I was immediately trying to get in touch with him. I succeeded, and from there, one thing came after the other. I became ambassador. I, I started to, to be around. I met Rex Scholar. We had meetups in Switzerland, in the crypto valley, this centralized of the central space where crypto of Switzerland needs to go up. So, yeah, that's where, where we really started off, and now we are in the middle of, of creating that's interesting that perhaps your first reaction to Hashgraph was you know, amazing potential, but perhaps you thought that maybe we wouldn't be focused on devs such as yourself. But Ken's joining the team reassured you that you know, we, we were interested in that space. It's good to hear. Yeah, absolutely. As for me, it wasn't a problem before. I, I was trying and figuring out how this works, so SDK is working and what I can do. But I was prepared to start sending you some paper to say, ah, I need a license and what would it cost <laughs> and stuff like that. So I, I was really, it was great. I was very grateful to learn that you had something else in mind. And this is awesome. Yeah. You mentioned building. 
Yeah. Can, can you talk about some of the dApps you're, you're building and, and where they are in the roadmap? Very much so. We, we really try then to do several things. Within my, my very own small digital business foundry, within the incubator, I have actually two that I can work with. And uh, one is, is, is a uh, CY ID, is craft your identity. This is more a reference architecture. I tried, to, I tried a lot of things out and, and I'm there with uh, playing around with, with microservices. And the other one is the one that, that I'm really for, other than really uh, happy to work on. It's called Ecclesia. It is a decentralized marketplace. And I'm allowed to bring now uh, marketing pictures and, and be then on the, the Hidera website. So it's, it's awesome. And because this, this whole idea, what I would try to do with Ecclesia, it's actually called a radical market. It is just a marketplace for collectors. It's about collecting items, collectibles. So not so much about art or, or very expensive things. So much more about vintage records of Elvis or, or some figures, uh, some, some sculptures, some Vaiweta workshop about Lord of the Rings or something like that, some Yoda that, that is around, that has some, some value for a uh, collector. Why is this interesting to start with the collectors? Actually, they are seller and buyer at the same time. They are some sort of merchants. They live in their very own ecosystem. So they share some of them together, some valuization or some values about the particular thing they are collecting. This is easier to go into and figure out how to find the trust among these equals, so this community, this guild, and to start providing them solutions based on Hidera which should in the end lead to a thing in the radical markets that has a lot to do with dynamic pricing. So think about auctions where we can provide information about a fair price within the market, within this, let's say, community, social community overall. So increasing the trust in these very targeted communities. And from there, you can imagine many, many different platforms and markets to then grow. You've used the term radical markets a number of times. Can you, can you define that? Yes. Actually, it's, uh, I read it in a book uh, not so long ago, uh, I think 2018. It's written by Glenn Weil and Eric Posner. Glenn Weil seems to be a uh, principal researcher at Microsoft. They are both close into economics. And the whole idea of the radical market is actually, it's a theme discussed since two, three hundred years under economists. So like, uh, it goes really back to Adam Smith and, and, and the whole story. If you think about the discussion between the left wing and the right wing and the whole idea of liberalism in both, the problem is that also in the more right wing argumentation about the free markets, we have a thing they call the monopoly problem. Normally, we think we, we all uh, we grew up with this experience also that if you possess something, if it is your property, you will look after it. So this is the, the big argument, of course, against the, the left-wingers, that if you make commons out of everything, that nobody will look after it. It's like having a kitchen, sharing a kitchen with five parties. Nobody will clean it up. At the end. And so on the other side, if you have the property, if you possess the property, the idea is that you then will look after it because, of course, it will grow in value and, and you can sell it for a higher price tomorrow. Now, the monopoly problem is a thing that you have the monopoly in the market the opposite starts to happen you have a too high of a price the price you can make the price so you make it as high as you can and on the other side you actually reduce your caring about the thing it doesn't get better you you don't look after the house it, it, it also degrades in in quality and so what the radical market tries to do is to balance these two things in a fair way. So as you can guess, we have tons of things that become possible with Hidera. 
it's something they call that then partly common good. So you can go then deep. So it's, it's incredible to go deep in, the, in these whole ideas that they have here and they discuss in this book. However, uh, if, I, if I simplify the whole thing, for me, it comes back to a platform, a marketplace, where if you give something, as if you, and so there, if you take something from the platform, you obviously pay something for what you have taken or, or took from the platform. But if you give something to the platform, you can receive something. So the platform pays you something back. And until now, it was very hard in the digital world to define this level of trust, to find, of course, the DLTs are a possibility to deliver the trust. But if you don't have the speed and the low transaction cost, it's, it's a problem because to really go into this, to start playing around with these mechanisms, you need low transaction costs. Hidera gives you really all the three. As it's, it's, it's incredible. We have the speed. We, we have the low transaction cost and it gives you this fairness because you have something like a third party, like it's, it's almost like the internet itself gives you, gives you these timestamps, but it's awesome. It's amazing. That's very interesting. So, so Hedera can, as you say, through, through our speed and consequently low fees on micropayments, we can enable that sort of bi-directional flow of value that you know, if I understood correctly, radical markets are, are meant to enable. Yes. And, and Ecclesia is an example of, of such a radical market. Is for me, so in the space of collectibles, which is not new, right? Start, I think even eBay started on this theme. So it's, it's an easy target group. All of us can somehow relate to it. Uh, you can understand what's happening. It's about things. So it's about digital assets at the end of the day. Uh, I always try to find themes or topics that are not too much regulated from day one, right? It's cool to do a health dossier or as a health record or, or go into tax, solving tax uh, taxation problems and so on. Yes, of course, but it's much, much, much more complicated to start off, not just from a price point of view, but also from a regulation point of view. And so I see myself much more as a, as a merchant, as a uh, merchant of digital data. And of course, I was talking about the Web 2.0. For me, it was more or less just Mark as a, the, the world of the digital marketing space. We learned to shout louder, but somehow I have the impression that the world didn't really became better from this. And when you look into the whole deep fake complexities at the moment, we need a way to increase the trust again in the digital world. Otherwise, maybe these dystropies that goes in, go into closed internets and stuff like that would really start to have to emerge because nobody would be able anymore to trust the information. So you need to more or less be completely transparent. So let's say somehow like the Chinese model to go in there. We try somehow to offer a third way next to the pure capitalism model and the pure communistic model, and where I definitely think we can add something. Agreed. On the subject of deep fakes, I, I wrote a blog post some time ago with Lehman on the role that DLTs can play. You know, it's one part of the solution, but there's a role for a trusted timestamp server to combat deep fakes. How will uh, Ecclesia manifest on Hedera? Which, which services do you are you using for me at the moment the interesting thing i start with the smart co- here is the smart contract this is important even if it this is maybe the least obvious one of the of the hedera services but of course these items these collectibles are non fungible as we can make non fungible tokens and so it's perfect to start using the erc 1155 standard which is now a standard on ethereum why that because it gives me a way to add a metadata externalized metadata to the token and next thing i need to figure out is how much do i need the token how much is it just an, uh, a hash that i can also perfectly do the same with the claims or even just using the file system to store 
the hash that points them to some state that we have somewhere. And so you see, it starts here with this, at the end, the collector will just get, will start creating, managing his collection, right? And if he pays for the services and if he provides information about the collection, the price, what he did, when, why, and so on, then he starts to earn things. And so the second piece of the puzzle is then the micropayment because we need to figure out how I, I still work with paywalls so I, I will still have to have some subscription starting thing that I have money in the whole system from the beginning but at the end it would be awesome to have the market going just based on flow of, of value within and therefore uh, then the micropayment is absolutely crucial the difficulty is a little bit that I all, all the time talk about micropayment on the other side, a, a very shallow, very focused market of these collectors of some records. And this, of course, I have here a gap between some economy of scale I need because we have few of, of we have transaction with a, not a high value, let's say, let's say that. And on the other side, we are playing with an economy of scope where we are trying to target uh, fine groups. And so the third one, of course, is then the file system. Of course, there can be different things where to store all these collections. In the end, it goes about the guarding the heritage of such a collector's community. And therefore, the file system becomes very appealing again, if done the right way. For me, the beauty of Hidera, of course, is the consensus service, or is the whole way how the consensus is, is reached and how it scales and the sharding thing there in there all this beauty of gossip about gossip virtual voting. And therefore, having then access to via well, mirror notes as well to the consensus service is for me the real goal to get to. Ecclesia could maybe work already before that layer, at least if you don't really have uh, any, any flow of information that has to be recorded, recorded somehow. It's all of them. It's definitely all, it's all of them. them. That's, that's <laughs> encouraging. That's a committed DAP. Yeah, and, and talked about how the, the hash might point to state somewhere else. That, that made me think of consensus service. So it's great to hear that you're interested in, in that. I will really need all. As a, for me, it's, it's also a journey, right? We are learning, learning on both sides, on the business side as well on the technology side. And of course, at the end, for me, the DLT is not something... It, I don't go out to my customers and say, hey, I built something on Hidera. That's the reason why you should buy it now. So <laughs> it's really, it's a very, very important and, and, and powerful tool in the toolbox to architecture this next generation. Roland, you, you said you're learning. I think we are too. You know, we're we're going to learn what use cases are, are best fit for a smart contract. What use cases are, are better fit for a consensus service? When does it make sense to store business data in Hedera State or store it elsewhere and just tap into the consensus ordering. So we're looking forward to learning alongside dApps such as yours. Thank you. It's uh, very encouraging to hear you talking like that. Still a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Roland, uh, again, thank you very much for chatting with me today. Should we expect to see Ecclesia launch when Hedera goes away? I'm working to that point. So yes, I, I try everything to get there. Of course, as I myself don't know when this will be, it will be over the coming weeks. Point, point taken. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Roland. You're welcome. Thank you very, very much, Paul. This was awesome. Thank you for listening to Hedera Hashgraph's Gossip About Gossip. If you liked the episode, please subscribe, rate and review, and also share and tell your friends. Or connect with us on social media like Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Hashgraph. Particularly if you want to leave us feedback on the podcast. We look forward to hearing from you.